Hello my friends and welcome to my first tutorial for Affinity Designer. As you can see now my tutorials do have a webcam and we're gonna create a fun and easy Easter design. Uh, my name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer from Vienna, Austria and I want to thank my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Let's get started. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to delete everything here so we have a clean start and if you wonder if you're not that good with selecting colors, combining colors, all this kind of thing, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Designers are borrowing colors from other designers. It's a really everyday kind of thing to do. So what you're gonna do is, for example, you go on Pinterest and you enter Easter color palette and immediately you can see a lot of different, like these palettes here, uh, combined with the source picture are popping up. So this is really uh, useful. And for example, we can take this here, uh, which has very nice colors in that. So I will right click and then copy the picture and then go to Affinity Designer, right click and then paste the picture in here. And I will resize that to the document. There we go. So we have, I'm not using the palette by the way, I'm using the photo because I wanna have some more shades in here. That's important. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is right up here where it says swatches, click on these lines and select create palette from document. And the difference between application palette and document palette is that the application palette can be used in all documents while the document palette is just for this document. So I'm clicking on document palette and you can see it has created a selection of colors from the photo and even named it after the file that I have saved here. So Eastern Design Live. There we go. I can now delete my picture and start creating the Easter eggs. And that's super easy because like I said, we're gonna use easy tools this time. So we're gonna select our ellipse tool and just draw out a nice ellipse that is kind of egg-like it's not completely egg-like, so we wanted to have it a bit more of the egg characteristic. So right-click on that, convert to curves, and then this should automatically switch to your node tool, which is indicated by having this white arrow instead of the black arrow for the move tool. If not, you can go up here to the left side and select the node tool by hand. You can see the white arrow, that's the node tool. So select one of the nodes here, and then hold shift and select the other node and then still hold shift and move this down so you move both sides just a little bit and then we're gonna go up here and again hold shift and move this in a little bit and on the other side click hold shift move this in and when this snaps this means it's the equal distance from the other side so we have created our egg shape that was super easy so I want to rename this to egg because in Affinity Designer you're going to work with a lot of layers because shapes, each shape is a layer on its own. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to duplicate that layer and we are going to go up here to fill and select gradient. That's important and the type should be elliptical and you can see already that looks pretty nice. And what we want to do is on the left side, select white as a color, on the right side, select white as a color and select on the white side, 0% as the opacity. So now that we have that, we can use the fill tool and you can see now I have here points to adjust uh, my gradient and I can move it around to select where I want to have the highlight on my egg and I can make the highlight bigger or smaller. And also I have the ability to use the opacity over here in the layers to make it stronger or weaker. For now, I'm gonna leave it at 100%. So let's call this highlight real quick. There we go. Next thing we're gonna do is right click and duplicate this again because we also need a shadow. So with this selected, first of all, I'm gonna shadow name it. There we go, so now it's called shadow. And we're gonna go again to our ellipse tool because then we can select our fill. So let's click on fill and switch these over, both of them to the color black. 
and you might think now okay this is a black point i need a black outline uh, or not loud but i need it the other way around just click here gradient reverse bam it's on the other side of course this shadow is a lot too strong so again we're going to click our fill tool and now you can make this for example bigger there we go like that so you can basically um, create any kind of shape and you can make the um, how can I say the flow of the gradient or the the um, range of the gradient can change that so you can really influence how you want to have the shadow on your egg and you can also of course reduce the opacity to have less strong of a shadow there we go okay so now that we have created that as you can see that was super easy we are going to paint our egg it already has a color uh, but what we want to do is put some stripes on that so again we're going to use our rectangle tool like that it still has the gradient on that that's not a problem we're just going over here and going to click on a color which is changing it into a solid and this is why we need our swatches because this allows us in a very fast way to change our colors so now that we have that let's um, hold control and drag it down to duplicate it and then i move one of these handles a little bit up to make the other line a little bit thinner and give this for example a pink color and bring this a little bit closer like that that looks pretty cool okay so now you might think but this is sticking over the edge what we are going to do with that uh, you're just going to select both of these and move them onto your egg as sub layers here and now they are cut off at the edge of the leg uh, at the egg not leg okay so select both of these layers again and then control and move them down and then move them down again and we have created our first egg looks pretty cool right okay so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to select all of these layers here and we are hitting ctrl g on the keyboard boop, like that and then we are naming this egg all because it has the shadow and the highlight in there and now again i'm holding control moving the egg over because we want to have different egg designs so um let's go in here and we are going to delete all these lines that we have created before and again we are going to use our rectangle tool like that there we go and this time we're going to right click on that convert to curves and with our node tool which is again automatically selected i'm going to click here and then click here and then click here and then click here and now i'm selecting these two with holding shift and then with holding shift i'm going to move them up a little bit and you're looking at it's kind of not bent in a curve we want to have it on curve so to change that i can click up here convert to smooth Boop. and now you can see it's a very nice curve that i can use in my design like that so let's go over here select these two points again with the shift selected uh, click convert to curves or convert to smooth sorry and move that down okay and so we have created this nice little wave pattern and what we can do now is again we're going to snap it onto the egg and then control hold control and click and drag and click and drag and click and drag so last one maybe too much mm, no i think it's okay good let's move that up a little bit and we have created our second egg design that was super easy right uh let's do a third one i don't want to make this tutorial too long uh so just three egg designs you have seen in the preview there were more egg designs but you can come up with your own designs not a problem um, I want to show you another one that's pretty easy to do. So we're just going to use our ellipse, ellipse tool. Uh, let's set the color to, let's change the egg color first. Let's set it to green. And then, um, whoops, uh, where's our, there's our ellipse tool. There we go. Let's set this to a white. There we go. Or like not a complete white. It's good always to have like a little bit of something in the white to make it a little bit softer, at least on the screen on paper you have to decide what you actually want to do with that so what we're gonna do is we're gonna with control move it along uh, or like copy it and then change the shape of each of them a little bit by the way 
I want to uh, turn off snapping here real quick. Let's go in here, uh, snapping manager and turn that off. So we have a softer flow on the top of the egg. There we go. Move this around. And by the way, don't be too concerned uh, with uh, like the 3D bending of the shape around the uh, egg, stuff like that. This is not a 3D graphic, it's a vector design. So it's completely okay if this is not bending around the curve, which I don't think uh, Affinity Photo can even do because there is no kind of 3D uh, integration at the moment, at least. Okay, there we have our egg with different dots on there. Uh, by the way, one thing you want to do is you want to lock your shadow and highlight um, layers because when you lock them, now I can double click and I can select these shapes again before that was a bit complicated uh, to do. So there we go. I think that's good enough. Maybe make another shape over here. Uh, rotate that like this. Maybe resize it a little bit so each shape is a little bit different. Okay, and now what we want to do, of course, is take all of our ellipses and move it onto the egg as a sublayer. And again, this is cutting off the edge of the egg. Wait, I want to create one more over here so we have a little bit of balance from one side to the other. Okay, so now that we have created that, um, the next thing that I want to create is actually a background for our picture, as you can have seen in the uh, starting of the video. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the rectangle tool, just move it over all of the picture and set it as the background. So that was rather easy. Let's maybe, I don't know, use this color, darker color. We can play around with the colors in a second. I just want to show you how to create the design. And what I want to have is a repeating egg pattern in the background. So for that, I'm going to duplicate. Whoa, okay. I'm going to duplicate one of the eggs and deleting the highlight, deleting uh, the shadow, deleting all the shapes inside. And I'm going to set, um, actually, I just need the egg. Okay, there we go. So we have just the egg right now. I'm going to set this to white as a color. And I'm going to resize that real quick. You can hold shift to uh, keep the ratio of the egg while resizing. So let's make this a smaller size. And I'm going to put this up here. And then control shift and move it over in a straight line like that. And after you've done that, you can use Control and J on your keyboard to repeat that step. So that's super easy to do. And now I'm going to select all these new egg layers and I'm holding, I'm pressing Control G on my keyboard to create a group. And the next thing I'm gonna do is Control drag to create a second layer of all these eggs. Um, maybe here is good. Okay, so now again, I'm selecting both of these groups, Control G uh, to combine them. And again, Control and drag to move this down here with the Shift key so it's in a straight line. And eyeball the distance so it's equal to the other distance before. And now that we have this, we can again use Control and J to repeat our steps. And now we have a pattern in the background. So let's select again all of these groups and Control G. And now we can call this BG pattern as our background and move it in the back of everything. There we go. Move it around. Uh, you can reduce the opacity if you want to make like just a little bit, have them just a little bit look through. So now we have a nice egg wallpaper in the background and we can rearrange our eggs. You can of course rotate them if you want in any kind of position. Let's put them all down here, for example. Uh, there we go. I want to bring the green egg to the front uh, one second. Okay, bring the green egg to the front. That's what I want to do. And the next thing I'm going to do is on the green egg, 
effect, I'm going to do an outer shadow. So we have a shadow on the other egg, on the background, uh, in the other direction. So this is following my highlight that I've created before. Uh, let's reduce the opacity a bit. Okay, it looks pretty good. And um, of course, now you could go in here for each of the X and reposition the highlight. For example, you go in here and you can say, okay, because this is a little bit bent to this side, the highlight should be a little bit higher. And here the highlight should be a little bit more over here maybe. So this looks a little bit more realistic. Okay. And the other thing I'm going to do, and this is kind of a nice uh, design trick that you can do is just group these and then um, duplicate them, control and drag and rotate them. And you can just put them as a design element up here in the corner. So you have a little bit more cool stuff to look at like that. Of course, you can go always in and move these X around. Um, okay, there we go. Like I said, you can do more designs for the X. I'm cutting it a little bit short, so this tutorial is not going to be super long. The next thing we're going to create is a heart shape. Um, so let's go in here and create a nice heart shape like this. Uh, let's set the color to a nice pink. And what I'm going to do is to make this a little bit more interesting to look at. I'm going to duplicate the heart shape and then I'm going to hold uh I'm going to hold control and shift. Sorry, something fell from the wall behind. Hope it wasn't too loud in the video. And make this a different color. And of course, you could go in here and now uh, repeat this to add more shapes to the heart. But I feel like this is good enough. Let's put this over here and put another one over here. So there we go. And the next thing you want to have is a nice font that's working well with your design. So you can go, for example, on a page like 1001fonts.com and this has a button. Um, let's go here. It has a button here that says free for commercial use. So that's pretty useful if you want to create designs commercially and don't have to expand a lot because fonts can be really expensive. Um, what I did for this design, I first considered this font, but it was a bit too fancy, a bit too destructive from the rest of the design. So I used this one, which is a little bit more um, subtle uh, and works better with the design. So let's write our text here. The font is already selected, actually. Uh, happy Easter. There we go. Happy Easter. I find it's like a nice, uh, like always, uh, almost like a comic film kind of SpongeBob kind of font. I found it kind of nice and playful and work well with the design. Um, we should still adjust the background color a little bit. It looks a bit strange with the combination. You want to have a color that brings out um, the design of the X and not uh, interferes too much with your uh, text in the front. So let's click here and see if there is something that's nice that we could use. Otherwise, we can just go in and select our own color. Well, this is not too bad. Okay. Yeah, let's take this one. Okay, that's pretty nice. Um, one thing I want to change down here. Uh, you can go in here and uh, you can go to Copy. And the the strange thing about um, Affinity Designer is it does not have a paste for effect. But what you can do here is you go up here to edit and then paste FX. So you can do that and you can see now you have the shadow again uh, for this other X. So that's pretty nice. By the way, up here we should maybe turn off, either turn off or use the shadow for all the X. Let's use it for all the X so they have a little bit more contrast for the background there we go boom Pass the text. and we can also do that for the text there's the text i like shadows i'm sorry it's kind of i really like that kind of look okay so this was the easter design you can play around a lot more with the different designs that you can paint onto the X with these simple shapes. I showed you the basics of how to do that. So be playful and join our Reddit group where you can post your creations. I'm really looking forward to see what you've created. See you in the next tutorial. Bye.